we'll start with you, Brad. Okay, thank you, Dewey. Um, the Quarter Lake uh, Storm Plan Report is, uh, I passed out these two folks. Um, on the 15th there, we plowed and shoveled out plan of storm. We had quite a few storms up there uh, where we plowed and shoveled out. On the 24th, we got a call up to the plant. The um, uh, One of the wire bugs had came loose on top of the pole where the transformer is. And uh, we think that that possibly might have created a low voltage and it burned a whole bunch of the components out of the box. The uh, contactors were shot. Uh, the relays were shot. Everything was pretty well burned up. Um, Wayne went up and worked on it for a while, uh, decided it was a little bit too much for him, so we called in Toby Smith. Uh, Toby came up, and uh, we were able to get one side working, um, although it wasn't working uh, at 100%. We had to keep going up and pumping it down by hand until we could get some parts. Uh, Toby's been working on those parts. Um, I turned in a bill to the town here for around 1200 and some dollars for uh, some parts that Toby had bought to rebuild one side. So we have one side working. Uh, we, we thought there was a bad pump there, but uh, Toby was able to test that yesterday and the pump is good. So uh, that, that's a good thing. Um, he's put in uh, new contactors, new relays. Uh, uh, he tried to simplify the box like he did some of the ones over at the lake at the residence. So he, he, uh, he did that and uh, saved us some money. Um, the other contactor we found out, he has a guy that rebuilds them, um, and he has that down being rebuilt right now. So we're hoping within the next week or so that that will come back, um, and he's going to get that other side working for us. Um, but right now we do have the one side working, so um, it's in pretty good shape now. But we've had quite a few hours up there working on that whole mess. Uh, I did talk to him, Dewey spoke a little bit about possible insurance. I did talk to him a little bit about maybe writing a letter stating what had happened with the uh, wire bug coming loose on the pole. He's going to do that for the town uh, because he said that was definitely an issue and that he's pretty sure that was what the problem was. And I started a folder for you, Dewey, sir, where I've got his bill in there. And as I get more stuff in, I will add to that folder for you. Bring that into you so you can add to the folder. Uh, if he would <coughs> write that letter as soon as he could, I'd like to talk okay. to the the insurance company, and I'd like that date when that happened. Too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, right now, I got that down for the. I think we the first problem we had was uh, January twenty fourth. <clears throat> um, but I'll have him put that on the letter. Again, you'll see several times where we've been up there plowing and shoveling out after the storms and stuff. Um, just trying to keep the place open for the LP gas and the generator and all that stuff. Other than that, uh, that's about all I have for the plant, unless there's any questions for me. <coughs> question? Hey, Brad. Thank you. Inclusive bid certificate signed. And they are bidding Second is Stadium International Trucks. 
This is bin number one. Submitting certificate signed, and their bid is $196,928. And Stadium International bid on a second. Inclusive bidding certificate signed, $193,347. Why is there two? Would you repeat that? $193,347. Bid number one has some warranties on it, engine warranty. Would that be the additional five year extra warranties maybe for engine or something? Let's just look at all the bids first. Really. Yeah. And the last one we have Burr Truck. Submitting certificate signed. And their bid is $194,957. What kind of truck is that? Like Tracy Gold equipment. What kind of truck is it? Tracy's. Is that a Volvo or? What is Burr? Burr, we're coming out with uh, 194957. What kind of truck is it? That is a Volvo VHD tandem. Burr. Yes. <clears throat> Do you think that, uh, oh, uh, basically we should. Uh, Dave, listen to you study the specs. We need to sit down and some time to read these, yes. And make sure, I mean... We're compared to apples, apples, apples orange, orange, orange. Some of these bids are, are relatively close, mm -hmm. and make sure that we're bidding on everything that's... Uh, yep. 
Thank you. Now, uh, do you think we should table this till next month? Or? Well, I think we ought to get, uh, I need, give me a few days to at least sit down to go through these. Uh, if you guys want to call a special meeting next week or something to award it at that time, this way it's going to take them probably three months to have it built and everything we got to have done here. So I'm, I would like at least a week to get through this, but I got a lot of work this week to get done. I, mean, I, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, is a month too long? Uh, you want to get it? I would like to get started before that personally. Okay. But, uh, so. You say what? What do you want? You sit, have, set up a meeting later on then? Or? I would say we should set something up uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks or so. To okay. Give me time to get done. Like you said, I definitely need a few days. Okay. Like I said, they're kind of real close here. I just need to just give it to one person and if it's you know, something different into it. Okay, so I make a motion to table this until the uh, highway superintendent uh, sets up another meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Will you call us and let us know when the next meeting is? Yes, we will. Okay, sure. yep. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us down. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. No public hearing? No. I'd like to open it up to the... Yes? See if anybody has anything they'd like to bring up. Are you opening up the meeting to public questioning or? Uh, exactly. Uh, I have a question. My first question is, what is it possible to question the board about considering there's a gag order? Explain that again, please. Well, I'm under the understanding that there's a gag order in place. So before I ask a question, I need to know what it's okay to ask a question about. You can ask anything other than uh, anything to do with anything but gas. So you can bring up anything you want. <clears throat> so that would exclude fracking, gas, that would, health, that would exclude chemicals, fracking. anything? Uh, if you want to bring up something about <laughs> pipeline, which is uh, something that uh, the town is involved in at the present time, for example, Bluestone is already <clears throat> operating in the town of Sanford. The Constitution is, uh, uh, we've had meetings with uh, a gas <coughs> company that is planning on putting in a pipeline called the Constitution. If you want to ask questions about that, you're certainly welcome. I have a question about the Constitution. Okay, go ahead. Um, which path is the last one that we're talking about? I see so many on the website. Is it the path that's going across the bottom farm, or is it the one that's more north in the town of Sanford? Uh, it's going, <coughs> the, the last one that we've seen, which uh, we assume is going to be the one that they're looking at the most right now it's going to go the whole length of the town of Sanford. So it's uh, following 41, following kind It's of 41. coming in <clears throat> it's very similar to where Bluestone is. It's going to cross 17 um, very close to the same place and then it's uh, turning east and it's uh, in fact I have some maps that's if you would like to see one of them. Well, the last time there was any discussion, I think there were three separate maps out there, and I was a little confused about which one was the latest. And I know the surveyors have been around again, so. Yeah, now there's, uh, uh, there's probably been about 15 different routes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's hard to tell. Yes. It, uh, uh, 
the one that I believe that they're going to turn into FERC is the one that's uh, going to be going right through the town of Sanford. It's, uh, I, I, without showing you the map, it's kind of hard for me to, to tell you. It's going can to, you tell me where it crosses farm? Yes, I can tell you right where it's, uh, it's um, right between, uh, I believe, Campo and Luella Trusto. And Luella Trusto. Okay. <clears throat> it's going to be yeah. very close to Luella. It's going to be very close to the so Luella's property. Uh, yeah, I see the markers. And it's going to go right up over the hill. It's going to Simpa. Mm -hmm. It's going to go over in on camp. And then it's going to turn, come down across 41. And mm -hmm. uh, It uh, Then it's going to go on camp again. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to go on uh, Dudek Farms. And then it's going to head on to Dewey Decker. Mm -hmm. And going right on up to the whole length, right? Almost at a kitty corner of the whole town of Sanford. And do residents of the town of Sanford get the opportunity to comment on that path? Uh, we had a meeting with them, <coughs> with uh, I would say eight or ten people from the Constitution, um, and the board pretty much insists on the fact that uh, we want them to be open with the public. Um, I believe there's going to be a meeting the 21st of this month at the theater. I believe they're going to invite everybody that is on that <coughs> line. Somebody, uh, they should be getting an invitation on that. Uh, People that, just the, the ones that it's crossing their property? Well, they have, they have a 600 foot, I guess you, uh, there's 600 feet that's going to be narrowed down to, I believe, 110 feet. Uh, all those people that that touches on their property will be invited. Considering the fact that it's a 30-inch line and people within two miles of it are at risk if it explodes, shouldn't everyone be invited to this meeting? I think after that, after they have that meeting, I think it'll probably be open to everybody. Um, <clears throat> Be honest with you, the board talked about that. We tried to look at it. Personally, I like it open to everybody. I um, I think the more open you are, uh, the better off you are. If everybody understands what's going on, uh, it, it affects everybody in the town of Sanford one way or another. It um, uh, if the, if it's going to end up being on your property, it physically affects you. Um, there's good and bad about it both ways. Uh, the good part about it, it does create a tax revenue. Uh, the bad part about it is if it's coming on your property, you've got to deal with it. And a thing that really concerns us is that uh, they have imminent domain which it's a federal line, that's where the FERC comes from, and um, they can use that, I guess in my opinion, as a method of, um, I don't want to use the word dictate, but uh, it's... That's okay, you can use they that do word. Have, they do have the it's more forceful in the state, where Bluestone is uh, is controlled by the state. Like being a federal line, there's, is, the regulations are different. I um, we had quite a discussion with them. Uh, Bluestone, for example, tried to follow boundary lines. Mm -hmm. um, Constitution is going the shortest route from corner to corner, and it, um, it affects people's property a lot, a lot different. It, um, 
<coughs> so <coughs> I think I think the public wants to be very aware of this. Um, it affects it affects every property different. Mm -hmm. It um, it may go through rush on one person and might go right through building lots on another. It might be close to a, a house and everything. So I, I I would like to I'd like to have the public aware of what's going on. What can you tell me what the bond is? The Constitution is going to be responsible for? Well, I think the town has already made up their mind that we got to increase that. Uh -huh. That's um, we, we're dealing with Bluestone now, and um, <laughs> um, we're having no problems with Bluestone as far as uh, the operation. They're tearing roads up. Uh, we know that, but we knew that when, before they started. <coughs> um, we do have uh, a um, <coughs> bond with them. That, um, that's a million dollars, and that is not enough. And um, we don't anticipate having any problems with them. They've been very good to work with. Uh, but uh, we've also learned in the process that um, they're going nine miles in Tom Sanford. Constitution has gone over 15 miles. Uh, I think, uh, how many roads is Bluestone using? Right now they are using... Five roads? No. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. Had 12 of our roads. Well, well. Yeah. But once this other, they'll be using just about every road in a town in Sanford. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long their construction will be? How long they will be active in the town of Sanford? Constitution? That I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say a lot of it depends on weather. If Bluestone have been able to uh, build their line this summer, uh, they probably would have built it twice as fast and they wouldn't have damaged our roads nowhere near like they are now. Uh, Due to the weather and in and, and the the winter conditions, cold and then warms up. Everything the roads are suffering. I know. Not not just not just from bluestone, but just normal roads from normal travel. This year is going to be very difficult on roads. So how, how much of a bond are you going to ask for the Constitution people? That's a pretty good question. I, I, uh, because there's gossip out there that Windsor wanted two million and you offered them one million. And I just would wonder what's the difference, especially if they're going to be using every road. And that was one of the ways to woo them into Sanford. And that Windsor no. had some stringent noise ordinances and we don't. But I'm saying this is gossip Basically, and this is the kind of thing that needs to be cleared up. The road uses are, uh, in both towns are basically done by the same lawyers. Um, we have, I'm not sure whether bonds, whether you have bonds mixed up with insurance. For example, we have two million insurance, but a million in a bond. I'd have to look at Windsor for sure. I thought Windsor's was exactly the same. Now I got this information that said Randy Myers of Windsor required that they post a $2 million bond to work and that you just required a $1 million bond? I'm not, I can't say for sure on that, but uh, I assumed right from the start they were <clears throat> almost exactly the same. They were drawn up by the same lawyers, basically. The same lawyer firm, put it that way. Mm -hmm. I did not think there was hardly anything different. Yeah, so what happens if they do more damage than what we think? Like this winter work, certainly winter is not kind to our roads. Mm -hmm. So who pays for the, the remediation of our roads? Is it the taxpayers that's going no, to have to make that it's, up? It's going to be Bluestone. Or Constitution? Well, Constitution. I, I wouldn't uh, want you to quote me, but 
just off the top of my head, I think probably we're going to be looking at more like five million with the Constitution. But um, from what we've seen, we're all learning as we go. It uh, basically, um, the board is trying to do what they think is right. I'm sure we're not perfect. Uh, and we're going to learn as we, as we go. And we've already learned the fact that the bond is, is too low. Um, it's nothing that was done uh, in any way to bring them here, if that's what you're indicating, because that's, that's not true. Um, basically, what we thought everything was, was all set with, we wanted every, every town to begin with, we wanted all the towns to be the, as near the same as they could be. In fact, we wanted the county to take lead agent on the whole thing, but um, <clears throat> I believe the county at this point has got 500,000 on it. Isn't that correct? That's what's your uh, initial talks. So we're going to do 500,000, and then they realized what's going on out there, that what cost to rebuild the road at today. So now they're looking actually at an engineering firm, and they're doing the analysts. And they're going out looking at roads that tentatively that whoever may be using these. Uh, then they're trying to say, well, if you're going to use 50 miles in the county, for instance, you're going to have to put an X amount of dollars onto it. They got to look and see what tentatively what they're going to use. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. So what we do is say, I say to you guys is basically we're looking at the big picture here. We understand a million is not enough. Uh, as the board, they have to come back and we have to talk with the attorney or whatever and. Uh, we need to put a semi a dollar figure onto a bond for possible constitution if they do come here, you know, because that's not 100% set in stone saying they're going to come here at this time. But that's what they need to do. And like I said, this is a learning process for everybody here, uh, roughly what's happening out on the roads today. And we're just going to take it one step at a time. Here. Will there be a compressor associated with it? No. No, that compressor is going to be up in George uh, Albany with, with a square. In fact, they're not going to build a compressor. They're going to add on to the existing compressor, uh, my understanding. It's on the Indians' property or something up there, right? Yeah. That's the way I took it. Yeah. There's a compressor station up there. All they're doing is building on to the existing. As far as the town of Stanford, it will be just pipe. Who knows? It may it may come down to the fact that it uh, it be so much a mile. What road they use? Maybe that's the way to. Uh, I don't know what what's fair. It, uh, maybe we can talk to the code enforcement there. He, he charges so much for every dollar you spend. Uh, so maybe maybe the fair way would be so much per mile. I I really don't know. It, uh, but we have learned quite a little so far. I think that um, I think we were very fortunate to do what we did do because uh, I know we visited some places in Pennsylvania that, uh, and they had no road use agreements at all. But the gas companies, yeah, I know in Deming, uh, the gas companies fix the road better than, than they were before, and, and, and they're happy. Uh, and they had no road agreement. Because I was down there and I rode with a highway superintendent down in Devon. And that's, uh, he rode on some of the roads. It, um, <clears throat> he said that these roads are better than the town could ever fix. And I'm assuming the same thing's going to happen because of the heavy equipment. I'd like to ask um, about the gag order itself. Is that possible? Uh, no where, where, do you get, where do you get gag order from? I heard that there was a, a, a gag order in place to prevent, like as you said, to prevent speaking about certain topics. Is that true? No. Basically, the only thing we passed a resolution 
that was in reference to yes, and we <coughs> we did we had a well in fact you're aware of it we had a meeting here we spent two and a half hours, uh, which seemed to be a very nice meeting where everybody was against gas, and the town tried to answer all our questions. There was no problem. But then then the next meeting. It's, you set it up, you got those for and those against, and then you get a, a ball game like. You got two sides, and we tried <coughs> to set that up so that one side could speak for half an hour, which was the ones that was against gas, the other side could speak for half an hour, and, that, and each one was supposed to speak for uh, three minutes. And they had a half an hour each, which was no gag order whatsoever. So and it was forward, very difficult. Yeah. It was a very difficult meeting. But I mean, going forward, like right now, you said there's certain things that the public is not allowed to make questions about. Is that correct? Well, you can ask any question. Write it down. As far as gas, you got you got the right to uh, write down any questions you want. It's just that we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to go through every meeting for two hours, for example, dealing with with gas. That's up. That's up to the state. It um, the, the state has worked on this for four years, and they haven't been able to come to a decision yet. So you have nothing. Your bo this board has nothing really to do with it, as far as you're concerned. It's just something to do with the state, and it's not really a matter. Well, of I think concern. when it comes to gas, whether you're for it or whether you're against it, needs to be needs to be controlled by the state. The but state. if I but if I'm a resident, and if other people are residents, and they have questions about what's going to happen to them, you're saying that they should just go to the state and not not I think, concern themselves I, I with this board. I think basically you should go to the state. Because what what controlling the gas is the state. But if you have received a lot of money yourself and some other members of the board from these companies, do you not find it a little bit, uh, let's say, awkward or maybe illegal that you should even be serving on the board, much less restricting I, I people think, from asking I think questions it's, about it? I think it's very awkward, but I don't think it's. Uh, that I shouldn't be serving on the board. Well, how would you feel if you were in my place and I was serving on the board? Would you feel that you were being represented? If, no. If you're super, no, I wouldn't have a problem with it. You wouldn't. No. No. If you're you were, if you're representing the town, then that's what we're doing. But have you ever heard of any town board anywhere in the United States that has members on the board who have received millions of dollars? And yet restrict the public from asking questions about their own health and how the decisions of the board will affect their own health? Well, we can go through this here for, if you have a problem with it, I guess you probably could call the lawyer. Well, I wouldn't like to, I would like to ask the other members of the board. Go ahead. If they That's have what? a problem with what I just said, or do they have a problem, you sir and you sir and you madam and you two sirs, if you have a problem serving with someone who has received money to make decisions about something that he doesn't, that he has a vested interest in. I mean, don't you feel that that should be, that that should exempt him from serving on this board and maybe yourself wouldn't, I mean, if I was serving on the board, I wouldn't want to serve with someone like that. How can you justify it? How do you justify it? That's what I, to yourself. How would you, how would you justify it? You said well, I'm, I'm asking board. these other members if they're their opinion. Ahead and ask them. First off, they're not on the board. These are the right. board members here. Right. And uh, I feel we are all elected officials and we're going to do the best to serve our community. I have absolutely no problem working with anybody on this board whether they receive financial gain from any of the gas leases or not. I still feel that they're going to make the best decisions for the town of Sanford residents. And if, if you went to a place like Italy where a politician was receiving millions of dollars and they put him in jail for that, I mean, isn't there some kind of connection there? Don't you see the connection there? Not at all. Why not? I mean, what how is it? What you're saying, somebody in Italy receiving millions, receiving country, millions of dollars. Anywhere in the world. What did they receive millions of dollars for? for? Exactly what he's receiving millions of dollars for. From making decisions about the public sale <laughs> for something that he's paid. I don't believe, we, I don't believe we are making decisions for the public health. I 
believe that is something the state's going to control. Do you feel that someone should serve who has a vested interest? I feel that he, we just had an election. He was elected. We were, he was elected. I was elected. I feel that the community has said that these people are there to make a good decision for us. They received the most votes. They became elected officials. People felt comfortable with them making those decisions. And we're going to do the best to make the proper decisions. But I can't ask about my future. I can't ask about the future that you make decisions about. So I've heard your opinion, and I appreciate your honesty. Can I ask to hear the opinions of these two gentlemen here, if it doesn't require too much time? I think it boils right down to integrity. Sure, Dewey's got police, but he's not dishonest. And when he had, when we made that ruling, he recused himself, got away from the board. He had, uh, he had no vote in it at all. But you've got to realize that the man, you have to go by integrity and honesty. There he is. So that recusation, do you feel like that's the end of it? I do. Okay. And I appreciate I, I, your anger. I, as well. I totally I'm agree 100% with what so Kevin and Gordy have said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There, I don't think there's any problems with Dewey serving on the board because he has recluded himself you know, in important votes. And, uh, but going forward, that's what I'm saying. Going forward, that recusation, that was just one simple decision. We have all these decisions that you have to make in the future. So what about that? Are you saying it's not relevant in those cases? What decisions are you uh, concerned about? About everything that you decide from here on out. For the, I mean, this is going to be going on for decades as far as we know, right? Well, what decision do you think this board is going to have as far as... as uh, well, my most you're important, talking about health, right? Well, my most important concern I asked about before, and I, I could never get an answer, but now that you have this motion in place that restricts certain kinds of questions, I can't ask it now, right? So I'm kind of restricted as to what, what I can ask. And so the only thing left for me to ask about I don't think you're too restricted. You, you asked quite a few questions tonight. I think you got <laughs> Well, you said that I can't ask what I want to ask, so... You have four and a half years of those questions. We have a resolution in place that we're going to stand behind as far as talking about... <clears throat> but, uh, you got a pad right there, you got a pencil. You write it right down. And do what with it? Throw it in the trash? Give it right to that lady right there. And then what? The board, board will file it just exactly and, and check just the same as us. we have everything. In fact, uh, if where is he from? It, uh, for example, right here, so Leland Snyder. <coughs> I'm sorry. Leland Snyder. This is uh, you. You think that the town doesn't pay any attention to any of this stuff? Leland Snyder. You've got, um, on this one here, uh, Diane McGinnis, I and I can take you in my office and I can show you a pile of papers like that, that we keep. The uh, <coughs> clerk gets these papers and I think you'll find that each one of these, right now, mm -hmm. have copies of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so and you just write it right down, right on your paper right there, you give it to her and she'll make a copy for all of us. And then what would happen? That would that would disappear. We'll read it just the same, it, just the same as we do all the other things. But I can't ask you what I want to ask you, or am I? Is it no, okay? you you can you can write down anything that you can say. Well, I can say it also, can't I? No, you write it down. So if I if I were to attempt to ask what I what I asked you before, which you may remember, which you didn't answer. If I were to ask that again, would that mean that I would be arrested by the police and have to go to jail or something? No, no. Now, maybe you would go to jail if you were in Italy. You might, you might go to jail. No, I'm saying, you can ask anything is you that want. what your motion is meant for, to, re to restrict people to no. from speaking so you can send them to jail no. if they want to ask a question? No, that motion was to stop can I ask the same one, thing Can I ask one question and then I'll shut up? Would that be okay? Right. Write it right down. Can I ask you in person, speaking? Since you didn't answer me the last time I asked you. Write it down. So you won't answer. If it's to See, do that's with gas, so if it's to do with gas, we can pass that. If you've got anything that you want to ask me other than the gas, 
You can ask me right in front of all the people here, and I'll answer it as best I can. Would it be okay to ask a question about chemicals? About chemicals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to answer it, fine. Just let me know. Uh, the, the last time I spoke with you, I asked you <coughs> if you knew what chemicals were in fracking fluid, and you said you didn't know. I don't know. And you also said that you wanted to find out before any fracking happened here. I, so, I don't think I said that. Well, that's what I had written down that you said, because I heard it. And um, so, what I wanted to know is if you have since then, since you said that you would, if you have since then found an answer to that question, and if so, what is it? And uh, I, if you, I have, I have found out an answer. In fact, there's a let movie. me just uh, before you. Before you start, let me, let me just finish and then right. I just have one last piece. Uh, and the reason why I, I would like to know uh, is because uh, I think it affects everyone's health, all the citizens of this community. So if uh, that's why I feel it's important to know, not just for myself, but for everybody. So I think um, I think it would be very important for you to know. In fact, uh, I believe there was a movie. Uh, I probably can get you a copy. Well, not that, for me to know, no, but for you. Let to me know. talk. To you. Okay. Sure. Sorry. I didn't. And um, I think that would answer exactly just what you asked me when you talk about chemicals and everything. Right. And you, I'm not a, I'm not a professional person in that. I can't answer. It. But there is a professional uh, opinion, and I'm sure that that would be a better answer than I could possibly give you. Well, I didn't because I don't know what chemicals are into it. Right. I didn't they ask tell the me question, it's about though. the same as if you gotten under your sink right. in your kitchen and, and I don't know what you got under your sink in the kitchen, but, whether you were worried about it or not. But the reason I <clears> asked <throat> that question and the reason I'm trying to follow up on it is not so that I can know, because I already feel like I've satisfied my curiosity about what those chemicals are. But the reason is because uh, if you already leased your property to be drilled, then you already know that you have a contract to move forward with that. That means that you and, and you and your family will be exposed to that stuff. And so, in asking that question, and you saying that you don't know, and now all this time has passed and you still don't know, that tells me what kind of regard you have for your family and for everyone else because you haven't followed up on finding out what you said you were going to find out about and that's simple information you also told me that when, when I asked you you know why you don't know you said I don't know how to open a website well in all this time that has passed and with all these millions of dollars that people have received don't you think that it would take just a few minutes would be worth it to find out what these things are that's going to be affecting you, your family, and the whole rest of the community. So well, I have a lot of faith in mankind. And I mean, apparently you don't have much. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm assuming that people that are much smarter than I am uh, can make those studies. It, uh, and I, I assume that before they get through, I would hope that they would make the right decisions. Now, I think if somebody like you as a gentleman that worry about that, you probably ought to figure out and protect yourself, if, if that's a concern that you have. Now, my family lives in that valley. They always have, and they're going to, and I'm very concerned. There's nobody that's more concerned about my family than I am. Now, if you were that worried about it, I think probably you would have a different stance than you have. But you have the right to think whatever you want to think. And as far as these chemicals, <clears throat> I think we've gone as far as we need to go on that. You don't have to worry about me and my family anymore, okay? But I do. Well, I, you, no. you, you go home and you worry about it. And, uh, in fact, you pray about it, okay? And also, Because I'm going to pray for you. And I worry about the fact that you're representing us, and that yet you don't care to find out what the answers to these things are. Well, the voters must have wanted him, or they wouldn't have put him in there. Well, you go home and pray, all right? Well, the, you, that's the most, that's the best thing that you can do is to pray for all of us, okay? Well, I and, appreciate and you. And I'll pray for you. I appreciate your honest answer. I'm not trying to take up the time of the board. 
I really feel that it's important, and I've waited all this time. Well, I'm, I'm glad. This. I'm glad that you're concerned about I ran that. For office and I, and I, I, I respect you for the fact that you're worried. I ran for office, office because I couldn't get answers to my question, and now when I come back, and they say there's a gag order. I feel like you know. I feel like. Oh, you're the one making like, up the gag order. Gag order. There, well, there's, there's no there's, there's no gag order. Minutes. Okay, well, I it's thought only, you, it's only what you have in your head. When I first asked about it, you confirmed it. Now you're saying no. No, so, I well, didn't confirm it. You said there were certain things that you couldn't talk about. So. Well, 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 is not open for the public. I, I think the public portion. Does anybody else have anything else that they would like to bring up? Let this boy get home. I have a question. Go ahead. You, know, you said um, that the constitutional pipeline will bring, be, if I understood you correctly, a tax, bring in new tax revenue. How does that work? Well, it, it'll create a, a huge assessment. Now, if you if you followed uh, uh, Windsor, for example, the laser line went into Windsor, and it created enough assessment so that their school taxes went down. Uh, I think it was like $29 million of assessment. I don't quote me to exactly that, but I think that's what it was, and which means that they will create uh, a large, well, you could say tax bill. And the more they pay, the less the other people would pay. Now, you can look at that in a lot of different ways. Uh, if you were a school teacher and about to lose your job, uh, in, in, uh, because of the tax 2% cap, that could save a lot of jobs as far as school teachers is concerned. If you're not a taxpayer, for example, you're a taxpayer over here, and um, I'm hoping that that's going to affect our taxes quite, quite a little next year, just Bluestone will. We're hoping Bluestone will go online for this next, next year. Uh, That'll create a similar uh, uh, tax assessment to laser. Now, Constitution is going to be a longer line, but it's not going to have a, uh, a pumping station. Now, pumping station is going to be a, a big part of the year assessment. Now, what that's going to turn out, I don't know. Now, for example, it's going to be figured so much a foot. And whether you like it or whether you don't, everybody in the town of Sanford is going to get some benefit tax wise out of that assessment. That will lower our taxes? Hopefully it will. But yet the Millennium didn't. Why is that? Millennium was on, uh, the town of Sanford had no control of Millennium. Uh, the county IDA controlled that. Millennium is on a 15-year pilot program. And at this point, what we get instead of an tax assessment, uh, they are paying a 25%. Uh, so that for five years, they pay 25%. The next five years, it's going to be 50%. The next five years is going to be 75 percent, and then that'll go online. Um, the town of Sanford fought that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Broome County IDA pushed that through. And they won't do this with the Constitution? No. Shouldn't have done it with the Millennium either. <laughs> it, um, everybody in the town of Sanford or the Broome County, well, it wasn't just Broome County. It was pretty much the whole line of all the way through. There was one, excuse me, one county, I believe, opted out of that and got the full amount, which tells me that we all should have. We bought that as much as we could. We did not agree with it. Why should the people in the town of Sanford or Windsor subsidize a line that is pumping gas to New York City and giving New York City a break. Right. They're getting cheap gas and the line is tearing up our lane. So we didn't agree with that. And uh, 
where the damage is done, where the sacrifice is, that's where the, the reward should be. And that's, that's the way the Millennium Mine is. Can I ask one more question? I think you've asked enough. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Do we, I don't know if many people realize that the open meetings law does not require that you have to take any comments. And I think it's great that you have done what you've done in the past for the frackers and for the anti-frackers. And um, in fact, there was never a gag order. They were told at the time that we weren't going to take up all the meetings with it to write everything on a piece of paper. And for them to make the accusation as a gag order, I think is unfair. That's all. But there is no requirement. I mean, you can cut off all public uh, participation and comments because there's no law requiring that you take them. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? One more question. Do I think it's politically savvy that you have a public session? I We've always had a public session. Okay. I mean, and I think that's that's just good 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 politics to open it up that's to have a public session. No, there is no law in the books that say No, there isn't, but there's no reason to be abused when you're sitting here at, at No, but you got it. well, people have to speak. You know, well, that's really, it's, it's part of politics too. I see you at restaurants or whatever, and I'll go up and I'll say hello or whatever, because I've spoken at a meeting. I've spoken to do it. I've had a chance to speak to him. So I, I feel a little bit of, camaraderie to him or whatever, but if you cut people off from that, well, 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 you know, you know, you know, badgering Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying in general, you have to, I, I well, realize well, I'm that this is a tough issue. issue. This is a tough issue, you know. I'm just no. saying that it's a politically smart thing to do, to be able to have a public speaking. Well, and let in, in all respect, in all respect to you, you've always respected the board whenever you've been here. Uh, the board has always tried to respect you. Uh, we have always had the public part of the agenda. We've always been here. Your sister has been here. And um, as long as people respect, as far as I'm concerned, anybody can come in here. That, that's your privilege. But when it gets to a point of where you almost have to have police force come to a meeting, and I'm asked whether I want a, a vest to wear, it's time to start making a different decision and try to control, control that. It, you can have one side of any issue and not really have a problem. Once you get two sides of an issue, it, it's just like it's starting right here a little bit tonight. It's very easy to get out of control. And I don't think the board should be subject to that. And that's the reason why we passed that resolution. It wasn't to stop people from making the comments in public, but it was getting out of control. And, you know, and you witnessed that, you know. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's hard for, to get other business done. Yeah, you know, I, still and, a lot of the and it's, it's um, the board should not be subject to that type of a problem. Uh, the board is here to do as good as they can, uh, and the board is not capable of of making decisions that the state can't make. The state has been five, or five years trying to make a decision and this board does not have the capability of doing that. And thank you. But I think that you do because you could, if, if you didn't hold the view that you have, you could do something that would say to the state, uh, we oppose your view. Obviously, you don't hold that view. But if you did, you could take an action in that direction. And the fact that you could take that kind well, of basically, action... Basically, I'm just going to answer you one time. And well, I haven't okay? asked the question yet. Well, I know your question. That, uh, basically, if, I, if, I, if the board made a, a decision that made you happy... Not me. Would you, well, no, I, we're trying to make you happy. Okay. Uh, it, it would... Uh, it would represent maybe 5% of the people in the town of Sanford. And that wouldn't be fair to all the rest of them. Now, maybe in your eyes, you would say, well, the board is making a decision that's correct, but only view people like what you're talking about, like you, would be happy with that decision. 
and then we would be making all the other people unhappy with it. The board has taken a neutral decision. As far as this fracking and everything, it's up to the state. We've said that and said it. And I'm, in, I'm stopping the public hearing right here now. Okay. Well, my question, that wasn't my question. I no, let you know. we've stopped it. Okay. But the state is not my concern. My concern well, is you, you my talk. local representative, not the state. That's it. Well, if you were very concerned about the local, you'd have been here for the last four years. And where was you? I was out of the country, unfortunately. Was you really? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, not Italy. Um, why did you come back? Is, is that related to fracking? or? No, I mean, if you were out of the country, you weren't happy where you were? Well, I, I, I wrote a letter about that well, the other you night. Well, write like another you letter then, all right? So you I, were able to write when you were you over You just there. asked me a question, well, so... so you write now, okay? Do you want to hear the answer? No, I think we're, we're all doing So you asked me a question, but you don't want to hear the answer, okay? No, no you can decide now. Stop. Well, he just asked me a question, now he doesn't want to hear the answer. You said one more question before, stop wasting everybody's time. He asked me a question. Public participation is closed. We're moving on to the minutes. Yeah. Approval of minutes. Public participation is closed. Fine. If you want to wait until this is all done and everything, and we're all done and everybody's here, you come in and talk to me all you want to. I understand. I appreciate it. Okay? You can you can write in and we'll step right in my office okay. in there and you can talk. I appreciate that very much. Okay. You're invited. Thank you. Minutes. We have the organizational meeting, the regular meeting, <coughs> one eight, and we have a special meeting for Judge Clark. If, uh, <coughs> Can we lump them all together as one? Okay. Whatever you want to do. If there's any questions on any of them. I have no question, but I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of uh, special special meeting, the organizational meeting, the audit committee meeting, and our regular meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Here. Put it in order. Uh, we actually made two books up. Uh, one will be in the guys' break room, and there's going to be one out in the, uh, the shop itself for the guys. So we're going to be compliant. I will just stay with all the MSDF sheets. They had them there before. They're missing a few things, and we just want to make sure everything's up to date. 
Uh, second thing, Bert Lee has filed all the paperwork uh, to be paid, and I looked it over with Ron Lake, which is the town engineer. And uh, Ron has uh, requested that we pay Bert Lee, which we had a resolution passed at last meeting to do that. So now that's been done. Uh, at this time, uh, we're in the process of painting the shop over there, inside the walls. Kevin stops me today and give a little bit of a tour. Give it a facelift a little bit. Uh, we have rented a scissor lift from Adbar Reynolds, so we can reach the top of the walls over there without a problem. Looks safety. good. But with a safety concern, I didn't want to use the ladder, you know, the guys paint buckets and overhead and so on and so forth. And by doing that, I had uh, Admar come in and put a safety class on for the town highway crew. Uh, so now all of our guys in the shop have been certified in man lifts, scissor lifts, so on and so forth. Uh, and these guys were nice enough to come in and put the class on for all of our guys at the highway department and no charge for the town. So from here on out, uh, if they need, we need to rent a piece of equipment from them, a man lift or a sky lift or whatever, Basically, all they do is come back with a piece of equipment and they will uh, put onto their safety cards that they've been approved for the next step. For instance, if they need a sky lift, like I said, they'll have the certificate and they'll be signed off on that. But right now, everybody's been signed off on scissors. The guy came in, showed him a video. We did a discussion in house, demonstration in house. Everybody operated it to the gentleman put the class on and he gave them all new cards. And that was done at no charge. That was nice of them. Uh, <clears throat> we do have a lot of road damage here in the township right now from the Bluestone Company, which I've met representatives from Bluestone and also a couple contractors on the issue here. Um, we're in the process of right now trying to get some price quotes through different contractors to get these roads up to where they got to be. There's a few of them that are need full uh, reconstruction, unfortunately. But I will keep you posted as we move forward with that. Okay. Uh, I've also spoke to them in regards, you know, uh, myself, my deputy. Uh, we've actually had a few of our employees out there helping with some of the road work. You know, I don't feel it's fair to our taxpayers here that we absorb the cost of uh, paying our help to go out on overtime or whatever to take care of specific needs to the gas company itself. And they have come into an agreement with us that they will pay us for our guys' time and our equipment use here at the town. So it's not affecting any of us. So that money will come back to us, which will be put back into our budget. All right. Um, we're painting, after we got done painting the shop here, we're almost complete. It's not complete at this time. Uh, I have ordered four new LED light signs. It says exit on them, and they also have uh, emergency floodlights onto these. Uh, I went with the LEDs for the simple reason uh, they use half electricity, and uh, that I cut the electric bill down a little bit, because they're always maintaining a charge at all times, so if power does go out, these emergency lights will come on. And uh, I was searching the internet for them, and actually I found them for like half the price you could buy them even at Home Depot, out of a company out of Atlanta, Georgia, which has saved us quite a bit of money. So you guys have heads up on that. And I will be having uh, somebody install them after the shop's been completely painted. All right, uh, we're working with a few new vendors in the township. Uh, I'm saving us quite a bit of money now on different things we've been buying for the town itself. We had an MBA on the corner of the corner of Vinegar Hill and Gold Summit Road here back uh, February 4th. The gentleman uh, lost control of his vehicle, destroyed a road sign up there. We sent our guys up to fix the road sign. I spoke to him after I got the state police report onto it. And he's going to be cutting the town a check for the road sign, our guys' time for fixing it, all the materials. I asked him if he wanted to do that or put it through his insurance, and he felt it was a low enough price where he's just going to write the town check for that. Just so you have a heads up on that. All right. Uh, also, now, I know Kevin's brought this to everybody's attention here back a few months ago, but uh, we need to look at a way to dispose a lot of our paperwork safely. We have a lot of uh, paperwork over to our office, I'm sure, through the courts here, through this little building. There's a lot of paperwork 
work with people's, people's social security numbers on there, their identity, uh, driver's license numbers, so on and so forth. So we need to look at a, some way to shred the stuff safely and make sure the documents are disposed of so they're not out there just floating around. Uh, I can't recall exactly what Kevin had for a quote back a few months ago for you guys or this other company, but I did speak to Taylor Garbage today out of Vestal. And they were telling me uh, what they would do is drop like two big cans here, 55 gallon cans with locked lids, so on and so forth. The papers would go in, they'd lock them. And they'd come out once a month and shred all of them for us with a certificate stating that everything's been disposed of legally, you know, so it's not on public size. And they're telling us it's like $100 a month. But I think, if I recall, correct, you're around $50 maybe a month. Yeah, a lot cheaper. But it's something I think we need to look at for here in the future, you know, because there's a lot of documentation, like I said, uh, social security numbers, things like that, you know, with my guys with the driver's license numbers and things like that. I don't feel it's fair that we just, you know, we just can't tell the garbage because it goes to landfill and it falls out of the garbage truck or something on the way and somebody finds it. There's a lot of identity theft going on today. So we need to think about moving forward with this. Uh, whether you want to put Kevin back into charge of that because he did have a good information with the other company because I feel these guys are too expensive personally. But I think it's something we really need to look at. Over the office right now, I got a box so like this, like this. Like that on my floor while well, the paper's turned upside down into a box and they need to be disposed of. And I'm just not going to throw them in the garbage. Now, do you think that you have to set up something that's a monthly thing or is it something that you could set up that would... Uh... Well, these, these companies usually, they have other businesses they do here. <clears throat> so they stop and make a round, basically they make rounds and they... They unlock the box, take the paper, they shred it on site right there in their truck. In front of you. In front of you, you want to witness it. <clears throat> and it's basically, it's like a garbage pickup, a monthly garbage pickup. But they're shredding on site and, you know, they're certified that all your documents are going to be disposed of properly, the whole works. Many, many places use things like this, but it's, most of the time it is monthly because that's when they're making their round. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the reason why I asked the question. I mean, hundred dollars a month, twelve hundred dollars. It uh, if you could set up something. I mean, that seems like a lot of money to get just to shred. That's what I say. Those. You know, if you can set up something where it's every three months or something like that. I would have to look at the contract that they gave me there a few months ago. The company shred it, and I believe that was closer to actually around. 50. I think it was like the 38, but I, I it might have been vote. right. I don't know exact figures, but I know. And I could speak with him and say, you know, do you want to set up maybe a uh, bi monthly type yeah. thing where they can every two months or something and revise the contract? But just having what he's got sitting there in the glory now, we're taking a huge risk. And because uh, integrity is gone in some places and people will steal identities. I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want. <clears throat> Uh, we'll get right on that and get a price so that we can get them here. And uh, <coughs> he doesn't have enough paperwork where I think we would just need one box here. Mm -hmm. Clerk's office could use it. Your office could use it. Just Courtrooms could use it. <coughs> and he could use it as well. And I can bring my stuff right over, which would not be a problem. And okay. we, I think we're looking at, you say 1,200 a year, I think we're looking at probably half that or less. Okay. I just think it's something you need to look at, though. Okay. And uh, anybody have anything for me? I think we'll do is, like I said, we'll I'll look over those bids here in the next couple of days and so on. I'll call everybody instead of my a meeting up with us, and we'll come back to the table and make a uh, resolution or whatever we got to do at that point to accept okay. the bid that we need to do. I think I need, I think I'd skip the code enforcement and I see him yawning back there. Oh, nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No dog man tonight? Does that mean I can go now? Oh, No. Sorry. No problem. Started or where we left off. Well, I thought we should be 
I noticed once you get up to fifty thousand, every fifty thousand plus one hundred dollars. In other words, forty nine to fifty is two hundred and forty five. Then you go to a hundred thousand to four forty five. And uh, it basically breaks down uh, one hundred and fifty, six forty five. Um, and this is exactly the same as the town of deposit. Yes. The town of Hancock. Yes. 
And the village paying cut. And the village paying cut. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's an up-to-date um, scheduling that usually follows the three to five percent of the cost of the project mm -hmm. um, in the area we're in. Uh, you go to a larger area, the uh, percentages go up to eight or ten or twelve percent. Yeah. It, um, I think we should have seen this before. Probably. Uh, My doubt. <coughs> make you wear stuff. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we did make changes so drastic that uh, that the public would be able to handle. I think I think probably you should have been looking at this in increments many years ago. Yeah. But, uh, it is what it is. It, um, like in the town of deposit, um, <clears throat> when they come in for a building permit, um, are the contractors of the rule are they happy with it in any way? Or? Oh, absolutely. It, it's part of the building process. Okay. It, it's uh, like if you buy a car, you know, you buy a new car, you know, you know you're going to pay more insurance. You build a house, you know you have to have certain things in place. It, it, it's part of the process. Has the rest of the board looked at this? It, uh, <coughs> yes, <coughs> just now. Just, say, take for instance, we had a building permit this year for three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah, Th this, I was going to bring that up to you. Mm -hmm. okay. What I did was go through your building permit last year's permits, okay? You totaled out um, 45 permits. You uh, you took in $2,105, okay? And you had $1,722,900 in building cost project, project cost. With this schedule, your uh, fees would have brought $6,914. Again, which was, what the permit fees are for is administration. Mm -hmm. Doing what I do as far as going out, doing the inspections, uh, documenting everything, you know, state reports, education, all that stuff is supposed to be, uh, not supposed to be, but is in line with the, uh, the fees that, uh, that you take in, the administration part of it. Accept the new building permit fee schedule as of February 12th. Second. 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 Do you have any more questions, Duke? No, we're, we're not going to be discouraging building, but mm -hmm. no. No. I mean, it's happening in all the other municipalities. No, you're, you're the same mm -hmm. fee schedule right here. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just losing money. Yeah, I think I'm, our current fees are way, way too small. Yeah. Are you satisfied with it? Mm -hmm. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Now, is there <coughs> anything else as far as the, I don't know, regulations or anything? Have you gone through the whole thing? No, no. Um, I am. As a matter of fact, I just got a uh, town Hancock got an uh, Upper Delaware uh, grant to do a site plan review, and I talked to the uh, zoning board chairman uh, last week, and I'm going to bring him a copy of that to because they, they're looking to upgrade their site plan review. As I'm going through this, and I spoke a little bit with Mr. Klein about it today. Uh, looking at the laws that you have on books now and what you should be upgraded um, in the future. 
Uh, one, one question is, is uh, I'll bring up in a few minutes. Um, site plan review, uh, I think the floodplain law, once Bruin County gets the new maps done, you will get a, um, the state will provide your, I'm sorry, FEMA will provide you for a model law that will adopt the uses of the new maps. Your, the floodplain law you have now, I think, is 79. And uh, most of the towns that have been, had the new maps, have the, this uh, new law in effect. And you will be required to do that. The town of Sanford will be required to do that. But that stuff is, will be pretty much, uh, the, the, the model will be presented to Mr. Klein. Okay. for the board's approval. Uh, there are a couple other, um, I know some issues around the lakes and whatnot that I'll try to review and work with uh, either planning or zoning to, uh, you know, to see what those needs are and what we need to bring to you guys as far as bringing them. To <coughs> well, something that brings to my mind is uh, like junk yards. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, um, yeah, you know, know what I'm going through? <laughs> um, I mean, that's always a, uh, a hard issue. Mm -hmm. it, um, do you have, do you currently have junk yards in town? Uh, there's a few places that look like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I, um, <clears throat> it seems like it's, you tackle into something like that and you get up to a point of where you're down to six or eight of them or something like that, and you just don't get to the goal. Right. Uh, and um, I think that's something that we've got to look at. If, um, I know of one instance that uh, a person wanted to buy a real nice piece of property, and they decided that they wouldn't buy it because uh, of what right. they went by before they got the property. Yeah, the town, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, go ahead. I couldn't hear you. The, the town of Deposit uh, enacted a junkyard law um, two years ago. The town of Hancock has not issued a junkyard permit in six years. They just eliminated them. Uh, there, there's, there's a DEC, DEP problem in junkyards. And my feeling is that if the town wants to enact a junkyard law, it's a, a liability. It, it's, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen. Hand freeze, gas, oil, like J.D. was just saying, cleaning up that area. Just imagine three or four hundred cars on the field somewhere. Yep. You, you've got uh, brown fields that the state's going to just whack you. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're entertaining a junkyard law, I would not recommend it. Uh, if you have any junkyards that are permitted now, I would try to phase them out somehow, possibly through the zoning or whatever. I think this is something I think the board would like to have you look at. Absolutely. Uh, that's always a concern. Same thing as that dilapidated building. If, um, if you're going to make the neighborhood presentable, uh, you want people to, to come here. You need to, you need to put your pretty face on it, or as I like to say, come here and put your lipstick on. Sorry, girls. Well, it was just a year a year or two ago where <coughs> a person had a piece of crap and they wanted to sell it, and uh, well, actually it was a a farm at one time and gotten broke up in a couple pieces and uh, uh, they were concerned that it, uh, what was going on, <coughs> excuse me, going on there affected their ability to sell the property. Absolutely, absolutely. So we want to look at that too. You, you see, yeah, you see it in the villages. Uh, we have a, an unsightly building. Um, yes, we'd like to have a cosmetic law. I'd love to see that, where you have to paint your house no matter what. Okay. Or we come and do it and charge you for it. We'd all like to live in that uh, beautiful country house with a white picket fence. But it's not always possible for everyone, depending on their income. But 
We just have to do the best we can do with what we got. Okay, Heather, forward. I got something from the board of all of Mike is here also. I want to let you guys know I have been in contact with Beth and Gito with the Broome County uh, Hazardous Mitigation Planning Department. Um, I uh, forward uh, information to Mike here to be our floodplain administrator for the hazardous mitigation plan. Uh, if you guys recall, a few months ago, was last month we had a, a long <coughs> class or training here to go through all that paperwork. Uh, they took, accepted our paper, which is great, but the uh, only thing they had was they needed a floodplain administrator, which I thought would be great to uh, put Mike in that place for some reason. Yeah, yeah. He's developing and he's doing, you know, permits for development houses sorry, and things sorry, like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I just want you guys to know I did pass the buck on, yeah, on that part, but I'm still... Okay. And I'll, I'll address that in a moment. Um, you know, while you're bringing that up, though, it, uh, I think um, I think I'd like to have him kind of respond back to what we're doing, with, for example, with Bluestone. So we're starting to put uh, uh, pipes in, you know, uh, driveway, you know, all that type of things. That, uh, I think we want to take a look at all that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have you. No, no problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, he's more than happy to work with JD on that, so mm -hmm. he's been done. You have anything else? Oh, don't forget Bob's stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, the, well, going back to the, um, the difference in the permit fees from last year to this year, I want to, I'd ask you uh, to consider mileage. Uh, paid me mileage last time and um, wondered if you'd have put any thought into that and I would think with the difference in permit, permit fees that that would be something that uh, you guys could do or would do. Uh, uh, we, did, we did budget the mileage and um, just between you and I, I'll be very frank, mm -hmm. uh, your first month on a job and ask for a pay increase, I didn't really appreciate it. <laughs> that I don't know what, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Uh, yeah, I understand uh, that. The rest of work and that, they can uh, adjust to that. It, uh, uh, that's something for next year. Well, I, I just, uh -huh. the reason I said that was I like to package everything and I like going through the permit, the, the the permit fees that you used to have. Um, it's the town of Hancock provides a vehicle. The town of deposit pays me mileage. Most code guys get mileage. So again, it wasn't something out of the blue. I mean, it would it was for you, but for me, it's normal business. Okay. Uh, I would look at that the same way I looked at the permit fees and any of your laws. So and that's, if, if that's come, something. If that came out as, uh, I think you. Thought I didn't mean to say. I, I apologize for that. It well, wasn't it, like um, it wasn't like throwing a stone. Well, it's unusual for a person to take the uh, first month and ask for an increase when they <laughs> well, when they applied for the job. Well, I kind of assumed, riddle. I kind of assumed that he was already at mileage, so that was my mistake. Okay. Well, that's something for next year. That'll work. It. Um, <clears throat> um, We'll see how that works out. It, uh, I don't want to get the impression that uh, we're going to. Uh, you indicated that uh, you should make enough money to pay your wages. Uh, you just figured out how to pay half of them, <laughs> and you're already asking for more money. It, uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to increase oh, yeah. the rates again. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll bring in more business, I promise. Okay, we'll see how that works. <laughs> no problem. Um, the only uh, other fee, I'd like to see you set a uh, floodplain development permit fee. Uh, again, it's usually a base, one-time fee. Uh, I have $50 and $100 in two municipalities. I don't think I understand what that fee is. It, it's there are two. If you build <coughs> in the floodplain, 
you because you need a building permit and you need a floodplain development permit that's required by FEMA. Okay. That permit means that I follow all your floodplain laws, the state building code, floodplain laws, and FEMA stuff. That's okay. a completely separate permit. <clears throat> and with that permit, there is a fee. It, it's not a, a, a fee like the uh, building permits would be based on the cost of the project. It's a one-time base price fee. Okay. Okay, it's, it's separate from the building permit. You know that? We haven't been doing that? You, I don't see you ever issuing a building permit. <laughs> but that doesn't mean there isn't one there, and I'm not saying anything, look, look but I'm just going through what's in the file cabinet. Okay. And that's the other, um, I, again, the, the, the floodplain application is a FEMA document, and I created the actual permit, which is, <coughs> I don't know if I gave it out or not. No. The application is a six-page six permit, that uh, again is required, and then I issue the building or the floodplain permit like I would uh, a building permit. Okay, and I think that's going to become a bigger issue all the time. The uh, I can quite honestly tell you I'm surprised you haven't gotten some kind of response from anyone, especially with the flooding you've had in the last two or three years. That's right. Because they in Hancock, they come down and they kick my butt pretty good. I issued 15 permits, and there were 20-some permits issued before I got there. All 20 of those buildings were underwater. The 15 that I issued were not. They have a really good connection in all of them, believe me. And that's just simply following the laws that you already have on the book. So that mine is just looking better all the time if I keep talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, you know, I, I like to say you, you can pick a number on that. Uh, again, it's usually not an issue with the contractor or the homeowner because they know it's part of the process. It has to be done. Okay. So I don't have anything in front of me at this time, so you can work out that fee whenever you want. Uh, Again, I'd like to ask you to, is what you've done in the town of deposit. I'd like, uh, I'd like to keep things. It's, it's easier for me to, to have this, the same process in all of this. That's what we're trying to say. Right. And, and uh, I think deposit's 50, uh, Hancock's 50, the village of Hancock's 100. So, like I say, pick a number, whatever you feel comfortable with. Well, I think it's 50, it needs to be 50. <laughs> If he is, is okay. this is something we want to approve then as far as mm -hmm. a floodplain permit? Yeah, probably you would, uh, so I would think. You better have a motion on that? Well, I would think when, uh, if, if, you, if you need, I don't think you need a motion. Whoops, that was the supervisor and me speaking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, That's your job. <laughs> um, I think you have, uh, I don't want to say it right. I think you can adjust fees at any point without a board resolution. But you, you may, you might want to ask uh, Mr. Klein. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, if we're if we're creating a fee. I think it should be in a motion. Well, well I was going to say you could you could uh, put these together: the building yeah. permit, the floodplain permit. Yes. You know the use of both those permits and the fees that go with them. Yeah. And, you know, if, like I said, I'm not sure you need to make a motion, but if... Uh, put the two, it's put the two together. Put the, put the two together and then you're good. Motion? Good. That's good to me. Okay. Second. Second. Sounds good. A motion to include the floodplain permit and a $50 fee along with our building permit fee schedule as of today. I'll second that, Allison. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, that part. Uh, my good buddy JD.
sent the hazard mitigation people to me. Um, and uh, getting back to the computer upgrades, uh, I did the stuff at home. And they had uh, a few questions. Uh, this is Broome County. Uh, they had a few questions of uh, who did what, why, and where, and when. And they highlighted them and uh, emailed them, and it's me. So I filled in all, all those little yellow things that uh, <laughs> somebody else didn't want to do. But that is, that is squared away. And I think the only thing that was a question was, a, uh, do we have a uh, comprehensive emergency management plan? Which I don't think you do. But uh, that is something that I work with uh, Delaware County Hazard Mitigation. I'm on that committee and I can certainly do that with Brook County. That's not a question of they They usually like to have a couple guys in, but especially in the uh, areas that are subject to flooding. So that's, okay. that's not an issue that, again, that can be done. Um, most of that stuff's done online. So we passed our test. <laughs> I, I guess they, they, they didn't make. Uh, I, 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 I have that information home. The uh, lady I was contacting, so she must have been happy because I uh, filled in the spaces and emailed it back to her. Um, the only other thing I have before it gets into tomorrow, I spoke to Mr. Klein today. I have two two um, applications, one for the planning board and one for the uh, uh, ZBA on two issues that I should just inform you that are in progress. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain is looking to do mobile homes on Farm Road, I believe it is. And Mr. Merritt is looking to uh, put a campground, uh, tenting, hiking, bike path type of thing on his property. Uh, on Gill Road, I think it was. Yeah, on Gill Road. Uh, those two have been sent to both uh, the planning board and the ZBA. And, uh, I said, Mr. Klein said I should inform you. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Each, each town does it different. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm yeah. just I'm going to just move it into the direction that you guys have always done things. Okay. So everybody's happy. Do I wait for that's where the issue to that nerd George or not? Uh I have not gone through this. Okay completely. I looked at it and I spoke to both chairmen and it's in a very early stage. All right, well, let me know what's happening. Yeah, okay. I think, that's all my little notes, I believe. That's all I have. Well, you did pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> You do better than me. You're a much more patient fellow than I am. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I think we're going to have to get you up in front of this uh, program so that you don't have to set through everything. No, that, that's not a problem. That's not a problem? No, no. Actually, it's pretty good because, like I say, I have Chinese food tonight, so. The longer I stay up or not, <laughs> okay. the better off I'm going to be. All right. Thank you again. Okay. Clerk. Uh, dog control officer submitted report for January 8, 2013 through February 12, 2013. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'd like to ask the board's approval for bond resolution uh, authorizing the acquisition of machinery and apparatus for road reconstruction and snow removal, stating the estimate maximum cost. Thank you. Uh, 
Good night, Mike. Good night, Mike. I'm sorry. I I'm here. sorry. I started too quickly. Uh, authorizing the acquisition of machinery and apparatus for road reconstruction and snow removal, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is two hundred twenty-five thousand. Appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing issuance of two hundred twenty-five thousand serial bonds of said town to finance said appropriation. This, this is the bond for the uh, yeah. Uh, we need to get something in place so that uh, JD decides to buy that truck. We want to be able to pay for it. So we need a motion on that. Is there a second? I'll second it, Ellison. I think you need a Roll call vote. Yes, Kimi A. Decker. Aye. David O. Martin. Aye. R. Gordon Tyler. Aye. Kevin. David, I'm sorry. Kevin. Aye. Vote on him. Aye. I'm going to keep doing that to you. Sorry. <laughs> and I'd also like the board to approve resolution to support Broome County's application to become a land bank. I read that. That looks good. Looks really good. I mean, looks like a no-brainer, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, I think it's something that uh, the county's come up with. It, to, rather than just sell some of these properties for nothing, it, uh, to look to uh, develop it in some way to create possibly industry or <coughs> or put a couple pieces together and. Uh, It'd be good for the community and, and, and get a better price. So I, I'll make a motion we pass this resolution. A second. No second. I need to my roll call vote on that. Too. Yes. Dewey A. Decker. Yes. David O. Martin. Aye. R. Gordon Tyler. Aye. Kevin J. McKee. Aye. And that's all I have. Well, thank you. I don't think I have anything. We pretty well covered everything I had. So I guess we'll take a break and end up going through the bills. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. You can stay and pay the bills if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs>